All right, geometry class. We're going to take a look at lesson 4.4, which we're going to apply some of our congruence postulates. And actually, we've already mentioned this angle-angle side congruence theorem. Um, it says if two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding angles inside of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. We could prove that. The reason, the main part of that proof is that since two angles are congruent, the third one will be congruent by the third angle theorem, and then we can prove the triangles are congruent by angle side angle. But we're going to jump into some of these other ones that are kind of practical in the sense that we're not just proving a theorem, but we're going to um, use it to find measures of angles or uh, describe different types of triangles. So the isosceles triangle theorem is a pretty important, well-known theorem in geometry. It says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, in other words, if it's an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite those sides, those are called the base angles, are congruent. Which, when we look at these triangles, obviously it looks to be true, but we never really showed that it was true. But we have, if it's an isosceles triangle, those two sides are congruent, means that the, side, the angles opposite have to be congruent as well. So angle A has to be congruent to angle B. Uh, we're not going to walk through the proof completely here. It's a nice little proof, and we'll do that maybe when we're in class together. But if we drew in this auxiliary line here, a line that's used to help prove something, if we drew in uh, a line that goes from this um, vertex to uh, the midpoint of the other side, so midpoint means these two would be congruent. We could prove the triangles are congruent by side, 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 because this thing would be congruent to itself. And if the triangles, two smaller triangles are congruent, angle A has to be congruent to angle B. Uh, so this is going to be helpful when we're looking for different measures. Uh, we'll throw in one quick example here. If we have an isosceles triangle, let's say these two are congruent, and we know this is 40 degrees we can find both of the other angles because the whole triangle has the angles have to add up to equal 180 so we do 180 minus the 40 of the one we just mentioned is 140 but since these two angles must be congruent we can take that 140 divide it by 2 and we get 70 so each of those angles needs to be 70. so a pretty helpful theorem there's also the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem which says if we start and we know two angles are congruent, that also means the sides must be congruent. So that's the converse. Um, there's a couple theorems that come from this. Uh, one of them being, and we talked about this earlier, a, a triangle that's equilateral, or a triangle is equilateral, if and only if it's equiangular. So let's just look at that. If it's equilateral, we know these three sides are congruent. Well, if this one's congruent to this one, the ones I just bolded, then this angle has to be congruent to this angle. But on the other hand, or continuing, if this blue one is congruent to this one, then the one's opposite, this, this angle has to be congruent to this angle. And now we have all three angles congruent. This is a biconditional statement. So if it's a biconditional statement, um, both ways are true. So if it's equilateral, then it's equilangular, or if it's equiangular, then it's equilateral. To prove a biconditional statement, you actually do two proofs. Uh, you, you have one given and prove for the first idea, and then you have to prove another thing with a different given and proven, really the given and proven end up being switched. The last thing we're going to look at is um, a proof. And sometimes, so in this proof, we have several triangles that are there, but sometimes we have to notice overlapping triangles. 
So in this example, it asks us, or it gives us some information, asks us to prove that uh, segment AC is congruent to segment DB. Well, let's go ahead and look at the information we have. Angle A is congruent to angle D, and angle ABC, hmm, that's this one here, is congruent to this angle. Well, that kind of throws us off a little bit because maybe we were, maybe we were looking at these triangles this yellow one and, and this yellow one and thinking, oh, maybe we can use that. Well, we can't because it doesn't include that entire angle that was mentioned in the given. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of pull these triangles apart. There's some overlapping triangles here that I'll show you. So here's one of them. And then we'll go in red. Here's the other one. You can remind us of Christmas. So we're gonna we're gonna pull those apart a little bit. So let's here's the red one. I'm just gonna try to resketch these. So this is B, this is C, and this is D. And then I'll draw this green one. This green one. This is A. This is C, and this is B. So let's take a look at this. We have our given angle A is congruent to angle D, and angle ABC is congruent to angle DCB. So I marked them in this figure at top, but now let's mark those things in, in the separated ones. And that's given, I'll write that first. So we know angle A, so we're looking at this one, angle A is congruent to angle D, and angle ABC is congruent to angle DCB. So we have two angles of one congruent to two angles of the other. And one thing, maybe I should have mentioned this right at the beginning when we were splitting these two apart. Notice that BC is part of both triangles. Well, if BC is part of both triangles, it is congruent to itself. So we're going to write BC is congruent to BC. I think we know by now that is the reflexive property when we say something's congruent to itself. Having trouble spelling reflexive property. And so in our, our uh, figure where I pulled those triangles apart, BC is congruent to BC. Well, now that we have that, we can see, oh, these two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. Now, that's not our goal. Our goal is to show AC is congruent to BD. But if we can show the two triangles are congruent, we know all corresponding parts are congruent. So we will say triangle ABC, just so A, B, C, this triangle is congruent to triangle. What corresponds to A? Well, that's D, so D, and then we went A, B, so we need to go A, D, C, and then to B. So these two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. And then we're able to finish this up. Since the two triangles are congruent, we know that all corresponding parts are congruent, which does include AC. That's this one here, congruent to DB. And so we can say AC is congruent to DB. And that's the definition of congruent triangles, but we normally just write C, P, C, T, C, which stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So in your assignment, you're going to be doing a couple proofs. The proofs may use some of these new theorems that we learned, like the isosceles triangle theorem or the converse um, and then the beginning of the homework, though, is just finding missing angles. And be aware that you'll maybe see supplementary angles sometimes. Maybe you'll see triangles, and you know they add up to 180. But also you might see isosceles triangles, where if you knew um, one of those angles, you also know the other one is the same. So that is lesson 4.4.